All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the three things that plant the seed of self-doubt. Of course, I always focus on personal development, and this one's also going to get a little esoteric. Okay, so let's start with number one. This is in personal development as you're growing up as a child, and this is, you know, when you're a wee little one. Um, Self-doubt can originate from when you're young, adults only praise you for the things that please them and only if you do it organically. If you do it because they tell you, you're not praised. It's like, oh, they just did it because I told them to. But if you then pick up what I wanted to do from my own inspired action got me nothing, but they always ask me when they pick me up from daycare, uh, what was your favorite part of daycare? I then ask them, what was your favorite part of day? When you see the reaction go, oh, she asked me my favorite part of my day and on her own. You, you're starting to learn to attune to other people and to do what they want and do what will make them happy versus yourself. Not too much you can do about this because unless you had like a parent who was like super conscious and aware of this stuff to start to notice, oh, did you bring me that flower to show mommy you love me? Oh, well, thank you, sweetheart, and praising you for when you showed love and receiving it for how you showed it. There's not too much you can do about this one other than just slowly start to recalibrate back towards how the actions at, that you like to take to show someone that you care about them and love them. Um, and then you can start to form compatible relationships with other people versus ones that are like a little bit of forced, a little bit of effort, a little bit of win-lose, a little bit of why we did what you wanted this time, um, so we should do what I want this time, compromise. Uh, so true healthy compatible relationships don't really have too much compromise in them because compromise someone's always losing you won last time so now it's my turn to win I won last time so now I'll sacrifice and we'll do what you want healthy relationships have a win-win focus a okay well I want the dishes done before we go to bed I don't want to do dishes before we go to bed I hate doing dishes like right before I'm going to bed but I wake up feeling crummy if there's dishes there how, this situation that appears lose-win, how do you find a third solution that works for everyone involved? Um, so just briefly, that could look like we'll hire a cleaner. If you're fine with doing dishes before going to bed, then you could do them before going to bed, but let's say the problem is, but now, then now I'm doing all the chores and that's not fair. So then it's a, okay, well, maybe you could do this before we go to bed. Maybe I'll start taking out the trash. I'll take one chore away from you if you start doing this one. So those are both like win-win. So just always navigate towards what is a third solution where we both feel like we're winning. Um, so that's just a little bit of, I always throw in personal development guys and making relationships better. Um, let's move on to the second reason. And now we're getting a little spiritual, a little esoteric. It's okay. So when you're in source, when you're in spirit land before coming down here, you, emotions aren't, you don't feel emotions when you're spirit. And that's part of the reason that makes it coming down to earth so desirable. It's like, what do emotions feel like? What does happiness feel like? What does sadness feel like? Why are they so sad uh, when that tragedy happened, when it, like how love attraction works? If you just put your focus on what you want to experience next, you could be drawn to the next good feeling thing. So what is that experience like? And what is it like to have like a physical body instead of just being source, spirit, you know, esoteric stuff. Um, and so from there, because you don't understand emotions when you're in source, you know, once you cross back over, transition back over, you don't understand the emotions. It's just more like a, why did I struggle so hard when I was down there? That doesn't look so hard from up here, right? Okay, so actually let's talk about what people say we get amnesia, we forget when we come down. No, we don't forget. It's once we're down here, the emotions are harder to navigate than we thought they would be because we're in source. It's like, why don't you just focus on what you want because then it will come in, but we forget what it's like. You know, Think of the first humans. We forget what it's like to, wait, I'm cold. How do I get warm? When you're in source, you're like, just focus on feeling warm. You'll get the inspired impulses to take the action to get warm. But when you're, but when you're like, you know, the first humans, you're like, rub these two rocks together and put it on this inkling and what's that spark? That's harder 
from source, it's like no big deal. It's like just keep focusing, keep following your impulse. You'll get what you want. But when you're when you're like you know on Earth and like the rain's coming down and you're putting like rocks together, you're like, what in the world? This makes no sense to me. Um, so you don't actually forget. It's that it's harder than it looks from source. We just don't understand resistance as much when we're in source. So when we come down here and we have parents who are no, don't do that. They start to teach us. So we don't forget. We're trained out of our natural impulse to focus on what we want. Um, okay. But reason number two, this is the esoteric one. Um, I'm so sorry. I just repeated myself, guys. I, when I go on a little tangents, I sometimes forget. Um, so when you're coming down to your body, before you come down, believe it or not, you, you do kind of pick the, the general overall theme of your life. I want to be a world server. I want like no responsibility. Um, so I, but I still want to like eat and have fun, no responsibility, no government stuff. So maybe manifest being homeless. When we're in source, it's like, well, it doesn't look so bad. You get places to sleep, you get, you get to eat. Okay. But you don't understand the incumbent emotions with the life choice that you chose or even a more positive one. Like, you know, being a singer, Jim Carrey's a good example of this. Like he came down to live a life of getting like rapid, big, huge fame. But then he was like, wait, guys, the fame was not everything I thought it would be. I'm actually kind of depressed. So it can go like for any type of lifestyle that you manifest. Um, or even Paris Hilton, you know, she came down for like a glamorous, luxurious life, but she's opened up about stuff that happened in camps when she was younger. Um, it's kind of like, well, I'm gonna have all that money. I can like hire any help I need. Why would I care if some stuff happened to me when I was younger, you know? So we don't, understand the emotions that are going to accompany the life choice that we made. So when we're like, think of it, you know, like we're in source and we start to come down, right? Cause we're about to like give, like be born. It's like, wait, wait, wait. I didn't, I didn't know that. Like, even though I wanted this life, like, I didn't know it was going to feel like this. So it's like, wait, did I choose? Right. Um, so for personal example, I came down to be, some people like to call me spiritual leader. Some people like to call me like a personal growth leader, a world service. I did come down for that. I wanted to come down, experience some trauma, navigate out of it, and then make it easier for others to navigate out of it. And so when I tapped back into that memory of me coming down, it was like a, wait, what's all this pain? What's all this anger? Why are they like ripping me out of my mom's womb? Like, wait, this is what it was going to feel like to be born into like a mom that had these kind of vibes? Like, oh my God. So there's a little like esoteric reason why we have like a little bit of self-doubt, but it's because we don't, we were in source. We don't know what emotions feel like. Um, okay. And so for the third reason, this is also a little bit like spiritual kind of esoteric. It's because we are source. Source is like everlasting love, ever expanding. Our physical bodies have a time limit. So if you ever just have that little bit of a nothing's wrong, but like maybe I got a little low key exhaustion. Maybe you got that like tiredness behind your eyes. It's because there's just that, I can't think of the word for it, but that just that slight disconnect between knowing that you're a powerful creator of life, knowing that you're a powerful eternal source being, but you're in a body that has a shelf life. So to feel your body have that, I don't want to use gross words, but like to feel your body having that decay, but knowing that you're all internal, there's just that little bit of, wait, this doesn't make sense. So those are three reasons of where like the seeds of self-doubt start from um, and the ways to kind of line up and be authentic who you are so you can go forth and start co-creating again is I already gave you the reason for number one and that's the young child thing where you had to do things that made others happy but act as if it was organic. You just have to take an honest assessment like wait did I do this because like my wife would like it love it? Um, yes fine. That's okay. It's like, it does feel good to take action that make others feel good, but it's about being like self honest with, did I do this because this was intrinsic and organic or did I do this because I knew it would make her happy? Cause that's, what's going to lead to a lot of authenticity and really good conversations in your relationships. Like, cause if you come in with like the, I bought you flowers, babe, I love buying flowers. I love romance, but you have that little disconnect from like childhood. You're going to feel a little bit of exhaustion every time you do it which could lead to a little bit of resentment, just a little bit of exhaustion in the relationship instead of, instead of 
babe, I bought you flowers because I know you like flowers. Like, yeah, I know you love flowers. So I wanted to go out of my way to do something special for you to show you that I like you and love you. Then the person, instead of going, oh, my babe just buys me flowers. Thanks, babe. Thanks. Right. You're not even getting the appreciation for the effort that you did that you didn't want to do intrinsically because it doesn't bring you joy to intrinsically do it. It brings you joy to make them happy, but it doesn't bring you intrinsic joy to do that act. Huge distinction there, guys. When you can figure out I'm doing this because I want to make you happy versus I'm doing this because it makes me happy and the fact that you enjoy it makes it even better. Oh, that little low-key exhaustion, that like clenching of the eyes is going to go away. Because um, then the conversation would look like, I already explained that, but the partner could go, babe, you did that for me. That was so sweet of you. Thank you for that effort towards me. There's going to be that little bit more sense of acknowledgement they get, that little more sense of appreciation that they share. If they're not sharing appreciation, taking for granted, that's a whole nother topic, a whole nother story. Um, but that's how you kind of resolve, number one. Number two, when you're first coming down to your body, that way you just kind of have to accept it. Like, okay, I get it. I kind of get how this, like, being spiritual in a human body works. Um, I can't think of much more to say on that one. It's just like, a, I did come down for this life. There is an element of owning that low vibe emotions aren't bad. They're not bad. They're part of the human experience. You know, like even anger. Anger is not bad. That's like anger and um, anger and a second emotion are the two most common suppressed emotions. Oh, like disgust. Anger and disgust are two common emotions that like a lot of people just suppress. But the beauty of anger, guys, is that when you get angry, it lets you know that there's a boundary that you didn't know you had has been crossed. And then once you can own like, oh, this is my boundary, this is my preference, I do prefer X, Y, Z. I do prefer guys who are romantic by nature. I do prefer eating at home versus going out to eat. I do prefer, you know, to be in relationship with people who aren't late. If you can get to the next step, which is this deep intrinsic knowing to the core of your being that you are worthy of that, anger lets you build when you process the emotions all the way, it lets you build that, that strong sense of self-worth and that I am inherently worthy. It helps you build self-worth, believe it or not. Um, okay, and so for the third one, you're, you're like a spiritual, everlasting, all-living being in a human body. For that, we just have to, when you just kind of go, I did choose to make this journey down here in a expiring body, just like accept it. Then that little low-key like, what's off, what's wrong, will like go away and you're going to gain this utter sense of appreciation for life. It's going to be this, you know, I do want to do yoga. My body, it is a body that has a shelf life. Let's go make it feel as good as we can. Let's like, let's put better food in this body since it has a shelf life. And when you can kind of make this leap, you'll also allow your life to start to be fueled by source. Source fuels the human body versus your human body feeling source. Um, when your human body is trying to feel source, that's when you're like, that's when you're like a, um, a rainbow beaming out of your chest, a lighthouse. you like, I got to do all this work to get high vibe. I beam it out there into the world and then good stuff comes to me. That's the human you trying to fuel the source you. I have to do all this work to get high vibe to then get good stuff into my life. Instead of sinking into I'm a spiritual being, the vibration that I admit calls in life towards me universe. I'd like to experience like fun, uplifting, gentle exploration around the world with a gorgeous man. When you exude that, now you'll get an inspired idea. Maybe it's go on a dating app. Maybe it's go to a coffee shop. Whatever that inspired idea is, that inspired idea came from source. So source is fueling the human body. The human body then has to take the action for the idea from source. If you're doing it the other way, that's when you're like, right, I've got to hit a thousand people because then, you know, 10 will sign up uh, for the freebie and then one will sign up for this. That's you trying to solve it with action and thoughts and, and strategy. All the strategy is good too, guys, but let the strategy be fueled by source. 
oh, what is this idea I had for starting a YouTube channel? Instead of, well, I want clients, I need to start a YouTube channel. Do you see that difference there? Um, all right, guys, I hope that helps you understand where some of the self-doubt comes from. You're not weak, you're not meek. It's just kind of part of the human experience. I hope these help you find resolution. Please feel free to peruse below. To come find me in my Facebook group. Apply for coaching if you want some one-on-one -on -one coaching. But I hope this video helped. And as always, write any questions below and I will make a video to your question. Love you guys. Bye.